Hey guys, Corey here with another concept video. Today, it's all about gene expression. In this video, we'll look at what gene expression is, how cells get differentiated through a process called methylation, and we'll look at some emerging research into something called epigenetics. So let's get started. Let's start with gene expression. The word gene expression refers to a process by which information from a gene is used in the synthesis of a functional gene product. In other words, a gene can be said to be expressed if it is used in the process of protein synthesis to make a protein. Some genes are expressed continuously, whereas others are only switched on or expressed at particular times, like when particular proteins are required. A good example of this is the hormone insulin, which is involved in the control of blood sugar levels. When your blood sugar levels get too high, the rate of expression of the gene for insulin will be increased to help lower the blood sugar levels. The process by which gene expression is controlled is very important and can be looked at from two different angles. First, through looking at a process called cell differentiation, which mostly occurs when you're developing pre-embryo, and second, by looking at how the rate or presence of gene expression can change on a day-to-day -day basis depending on outside factors. First, let's start with cell differentiation. Now let's take a step back for a minute and look at what you already know. You know that you started out as one cell, what we call a zygote, and that you are now trillions of cells, and that each of your cells contain a full set of your DNA because they all divide through mitosis. But you also know, even if you've never thought about it, that you have lots of different types of cells, and that those cells look and act very different to each other, like you have skin cells and muscle cells and bone cells. But this is where it gets interesting. Because if all of these cells contain the same DNA, and the DNA controls functioning cells, how can there be different types of cells? Well, the answer is that although all cells contain the same DNA, different types of cells will express completely different genes than others, and that this is what makes them function in a certain way. For example, a skin cell will express or have different genes switched on than a muscle cell, and this will therefore produce different types of proteins and it is the different proteins produced by cells that determine how they look and behave. The process of deciding which genes are expressed occurs during a process called cellular differentiation. This process mostly occurs when you are a pre-embryo early on in your development when you're something called a gastrula. At this stage, all of your cells are what we call stem cells, which are basically unspecialized and in effect have all of the genes available to them. During the process of differentiation, stem cells become specialized as certain genes are left on and are able to be expressed and others are effectively switched off and therefore will not ever be expressed. This results in a specialized cell which will only produce a select number of proteins and will therefore become a particular type of cell. Now I keep doing this and you may be wondering how the process of switching on and off actually occurs, which is what we'll discuss now. The expression of genes is controlled by two factors through something called methylation and through the action of histones. Let's start with histones. As discussed previously, histones are proteins present in chromosomes which the DNA wraps around. This gives it structure, but it also serves another purpose. How tightly the DNA wraps around the histones affects its ability to be expressed. A tighter wrap will mean that a gene cannot be expressed and a looser wrap will increase the rate of expression. It's as simple as that. During differentiation, the DNA will wrap differently around the histones for different cells, and this affects which genes are expressed. The second factor is a process called methylation. DNA methylation is a process in which a methyl group is added to the DNA strand. This usually occurs to a cytosine base. The process is important because if a gene is methylated or contains lots of methyl groups, it will not be expressed and is effectively switched off. Again, this process happens in cellular differentiation and results in a specialised cell. Now that we understand how differentiation occurs and how genes can be switched off and on, we need to take a look at something called epigenetics. Now epigenetics is a study of changes in organisms caused by modification of gene expression rather than the alteration of the genetic code itself. Unlike changes caused by mutations that are caused by changes to the DNA itself, epigenetic changes are only caused by modification of gene expression. For example, changes to how much DNA is methylated as discussed previously. And there is strong evidence to suggest that these changes are brought about by lifestyle choices and environmental factors. For example, a high fat diet can cause certain genes to be over methylated and can therefore switch them off. 
This change to your gene expression can then have a large impact on your overall health. On top of this, there's also evidence that these epigenetic changes or tags may be inherited or passed down to future generations. If true, then things like the type and amount of food a person eats could affect their future child. So stay healthy, I guess, is the take home message. Well, that's it for gene expression. I hope you've learned something new and as always, check back soon for more concept videos.